Welcome back to Duke's Copy TV. Today I'm joined in the studio by Michelle Gerardin from UBP and we're talking about UBP's outlook for 2013. Michelle, thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Jennifer. Now firstly, UBP's outlook for 2013 is entitled Central Banks Keep On Pushing. So what is meant by that? We know that central banks now have a bias towards uh, pushing the economies out of recession and so they are really oriented towards growth. So we pick up this title because we were we liked one uh, quote from one of the Fed uh, governors uh, who said back in September, uh, uh, William Dudley said, you don't stop pushing a car which is stuck in the mud when the wheels start turning. You keep on pushing until the car is out of the mud and running up freely. So we liked this vision uh, because we thought it's really appropriate to what's happening now. We have central banks all over the world at different stages that are trying to push the world economy out of the mud, out of the recession uh, forces. And they will keep on doing so until they really know that uh, the economy, uh, be it in the US, in Europe, everywhere, out of recession. I see. And UBP's presentation last year, their key word was debt. What word have you chosen for 2013? The word will be credit. 2012 was uh, very much focused on the debt crisis in the Eurozone. 2013 will be the evolution of credit and domestic credit and its link to uh, world GDP. And you can see from this chart that there's a close connection between the two. When there's credit, there is growth. And when there's no credit, there's no growth. As we can see from 2008, credit supply has been flat and so has been uh, GDP in the major countries. So the idea is not for the central banks to keep on pushing all this money towards the real economy, for banks to take on this money and to provide more credit to the private sector. We see some evidence of that in the US, but there's still more to come and more which is needed in Europe. I see. Michelle, based on your assessment regarding credit, what do you see for US as well as European economies? For the US, we're pretty confident that the economy will be growing at positive rates. Uh, indeed, we see evidence that credit is uh, on the rise. The job which was done back uh, in 2008 of cleaning the bank's balance sheet with the so-called TARP, Trouble Asset Relief Program, is now such that the banks are doing what they're supposed to do, i.e. providing credit to the real economy. So the economy is fine there. We see some evidence of that. The real estate market is improving. We also see the so-called renaissance theme, i.e. that industry is, is going coming back to the U.S. Much of it was produced in, in, in China and you see if you look at the back of your iPhone uh, design in California manufactured assembled in China and we see that that some companies now are thinking of going back to assembling uh, computers uh, mobile phones back in the US because uh, the competi competitiveness of, of uh, the US is growing faster than in China and the wage difference, although it is still at the advantage of China, is not so big because the China wages are increasing fast. So we see some evidence of that. There's another thing we like about the US, it that it is moving gradually but surely towards being independent as far as energy is concerned. So they will be much less relying on uh, oil imports from, from uh, the Middle East. So this is, these are all big sort of structural theme which makes us confident that the US economy will, will be growing at a steady rate. We're not so positive alas, on the Eurozone, still stuck here in a situation where the central bank is providing all the money, the liquidity, but the banks are not doing what they're supposed to do, i.e. providing all this money to the real economy, basically because the balance sheet still has a lot of uh, bad loans in, in the Eurozone we don't see uh, so many good signs uh, for, the, for the economy because the credit there is flat. We see a lot of liquidity push from the central bank to the banks, but these banks are not using all this liquidity to inject in the real economy. So we've just entered into a recession. We've had two uh, quarters of negative growth in the Eurozone, and we don't see many signs that we will come out of the recession. We need more pushing from the central bank in 2013 
but we're not sure that the economies will come out of recession in the Eurozone next year. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for your insights. But just lastly, before I let you go, we're going to go on to our Ducas copy question. So we ask every guest that comes into the studio the same question. If you had one million US dollars to invest in the market for a year, where would you put it and why? And these are your options here. Okay, so uh, to start with, I won't be putting the million in one of the single asset classes that you're showing. Convinced that you cannot put all your, the eggs in the same basket. So you need a bit of diversification here. But the main category will be equities. So I would allocate 40% of that million, i.e. $400,000, to the equity bucket. The main argument is that equities have never offered so much value uh, if you compare them to bonds. Well, that's some great advice for our viewers. And Michelle, thank you so much for coming in once again and sharing your insights. And I look forward to having you in the studio again. Thank you. That's all from us here in the Duke's Copy Studio, but make sure you click back to the website for more insights and updates. Take care.